Greetings, junior scientists, scientists, and citizens of this great, big, weird, wild, and wonderful world in which we live. As always, I'm your humble science communicator, the Great Orbax, coming to you from the Department of Physics at the University of Guelph, and I'd like to welcome you to the January 2022 Stargazing Guide. As we usher in a hopeful, yet cold, new year, your challenge of winter cloud cover will still besiege you, junior scientists, but be patient. Because when the clouds do part, there's a universe in motion just above our heads. With the winter solstice behind us, daylight hours will increase while the hours of darkness will slowly decrease. The constellations of Taurus the Bull and Orion the Hunter continue to dominate in January as they rise in the east. Orion's Belt is one of the most identifiable parts of any constellation, something that we call an asterism. and is a great way to orient yourself in the night sky. Just look for the three stars that form the line of the belt. All in the Tack, All in the Lamb, and Mintaka. Lepus the Hare is also visible this month, appearing at the feet of Orion. The gas giants Jupiter and Saturn continue to be visible throughout January. To the unaided eye, these give the appearance of very bright stars, and you should be able to catch them in the early evening. Look to the southwest about 6 p.m. early in the month, and as the month goes on, they'll actually be setting earlier and earlier in the day. Now, while Jupiter and Saturn become less visible as the month progresses, Mars and Venus actually become more visible. These are best viewed in the morning around 7 a.m. in the southeast. January brings with it another meteor shower. From January 1st to the 5th, the quadrant hits will be emanating from the constellation Bootes in the northeast sky, peaking on the night between January 3rd and 4th with over 40 meteors an hour. This coincides nicely with the new moon, which should give us a dark sky for some spectacular viewing. The full moon this month occurs on Monday, January 17th, and is known as the wolf moon. It's also known as center moon, freeze up moon, cold moon, frost exploding moon, severe moon, hard moon, Canada goose moon, great moon, greetings moon, and spirit moon. Whew. The new moon this cycle occurs on January 31st, meaning that without the moon in the sky as a source of light, many other constellations and planets should be highly visible. So get out there, junior scientists, and take a look up. Now, while there are always interesting things up in the sky, we just sent something up there ourselves. NASA recently made space history with the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, the largest and most powerful space telescope ever built. Weighing the same as a school bus and the size of a tennis court, it took thousands of scientists, engineers, and technicians from over 14 countries, a total of 40 million hours, to build the James Webb Space Telescope. What an incredible example of what we can achieve when we all work together. Folded up like some sort of high-tech origami, the James Webb Space Telescope was placed inside an Ariane 5 rocket where it will travel for a month until it reaches a location 1.5 million kilometers behind the Earth as viewed from the Sun. There, using 132 actuators and motors, it will unfold 18 hexagonal segments to create a gold-plated mirror that measures 6.5 meters in diameter. To give you a comparison, the mirror on the Hubble telescope is only 2.5 meters in diameter. Now, while the Hubble telescope explores the visible range of light, the James Webb will be looking into the infrared. Unlike the short, tight wavelengths of light in the visible spectrum, infrared light has a longer wavelength, which allows it to slip past space dust more easily. This allows information that was previously hidden to us to be seen by the James Webb Space Telescope's instruments. The James Webb is so sensitive that theoretically it could pick up the heat signature of a bumblebee a distance away of the moon. The JWST will search for the first galaxies formed in the universe, study how they evolve, and observe the formation of stars from stellar nurseries to planetary systems. It will also use spectroscopy equipment to measure the chemical composition of these planetary systems, including our own solar system, and investigate the potential for other forms of life in the universe. We look forward to seeing what the James Webb Space Telescope will teach us in the coming years. And for more information, visit the NASA website. It may be cold out there, junior scientists, but that doesn't mean there isn't a universe full of wonder out there for you to discover. So put on your mitts and your jacket, get your toucan scarf, and make sure you get out there and take some time to look up. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to have a science-tastic day! Special thanks to Royal Sea Science's own planetary geochemist, Dr. Glynis Perret, for her help preparing our stargazing guide. We'd also like to thank the Skyview app and the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. 